students who actually come from other states mm -hmm. who are actually minority medical students right. who come here and they want to go back home they want to go back to their communities mm -hmm. and certainly that's understandable we're doing our best job here to try to make them feel comfortable here and one of the ways we've done that is working with the Escalapian Society. The Escalapian Society is basically uh, the Association of Minority uh, Medical uh, minority physicians within our community and they've done a tremendous job of making us feel welcome supporting our programs they're a big supporter of our diversity week celebration and bringing in dr carson and that has really made a lot of students feel comfortable and that they want to stay and i know i want to stay what is this this the, the high cost of medical school because i could buy a house in carmel for what it costs to to go to medical school how difficult an impediment is that for minorities? It's, it's, it's a major impediment. Uh, it's one of the first considerations that you'll have. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that definitely comes into play. I think uh, viewers think I'm joking. I'm not joking about you could buy a house in Carmel well, for, it, for it's, less than it's definitely school. It's definitely six figures. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you're in state, if you are not on scholarship. But if you are on scholarship... If you if you were out of state, we're talking maybe two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars could be that excessive. Occasionally, there have been proposals floated that the federal government ought to you know give tax forgiveness or other kinds of forgiveness if doctors agree to do their residency or others in underserved communities. Mm -hmm. Is that something that ought to happen? Um, well, it's something that that actually has happened. They actually mm -hmm. do have okay. those programs here, and they have one of those. They have one for each individual state. It's a it's basically a national national uh, program. Uh -huh. uh, but a lot of students really don't want to go into that because what it does is it limits them to just primary care. Mm -hmm. And you go through four years of training, you want to have the option to do pretty much what you would like to do, what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. What's your specialty going to be? And my specialty is going to be family practice. I'm, I just want to uh, sit down with my patients, spend a lot of time with them, uh, work through a variety of issues, maybe mental health issues. Uh, I'm all about really patient care and beginning patient care. Is that a, a becoming the rare breed in medicine, um, a family practitioner? Definitely. Uh, it's becoming a rare breed and it's particularly uh, becoming more of a rare breed, and this is a difficult uh, problem for us, with minority medical students. And, and why is that? First of all, you have the big money issues that we talked about before. We have all of these affirmative action or tax on affirmative action, mm -hmm. which are making medical schools a little bit concerned about providing scholarships specifically for minority students. So you have less scholarships and you have students coming in or coming out of medical school with an excessive amount of debt. Mm -hmm. Now, what do they do with this excessive amount of debt? They've got to pay it back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of students uh, don't feel going into family practice is going to do it in an expedient manner, and some of them pursue anesthesiology and surgery. We had six graduates, I believe, maybe seven graduates last year, uh, minority medical graduates, and four of them went into anesthesiology or surgery. We're with Robert Patterson. He's a third-year medical school student at your Indiana University School of Medicine. When we come back, he, he's in charge of a, he spearheads a, a unique program. It's called Doctor Back to School program in the IPS system. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about the older student in medical school. For some of you older folks, you can go back to school. Maybe we'll find all about that when the Amos Brown Show continues. Stay with us. Robert Patterson is a third year student at our Indiana University um, Medical School here in Indianapolis. He also spearheads a program called Doctor Back to School in the IPS system. What is that? Doctor Back to School program is actually an American Medical Association sponsored program. Mm -hmm. uh, the American Medical Association um, obviously of, of doctors and we have some uh, of the students on campus and they came to us uh, as SNMA because they thought it would be a program that we'd be interested in. What we do is we go once a month to a junior high school or mm -hmm. high school and talk to them about the possibilities of being involved in medicine right. uh, as a career. We want to encourage them, A, because we really need them because of the health disparity issues that we have, not just in our community here, but a, a nationwide. But secondly, we want to provide them with role models. We want them to see that there are those of us out there who are working to become physicians, who are going to come back and serve our community, and we want to encourage them to excel. Putting the cost factor of medical school off to the side for a minute, there are a lot of minorities who are involved in the life sciences industry mm -hmm. as a lab technician or they're in housekeeping. They're, they're involved on the periphery of medicine. If they're in their tw early in their 20s or maybe in their early 30s and they look at it and they, and they say to themselves, you know, I really could do that. Mm -hmm. 
Is that something that they ought to take a look at possibly? I, I think Medical so. school, particularly if they got their bachelor's degree and, they, and then they kind of put off going far.